Good evening. The headlines tonight, the 2nd of May, 1945. Adolf Hitler is dead. This is how the news was first broadcast to Britain late last night. This is London calling. Here is a news flash. The German radio has just announced that Hitler is dead. Berlin has fallen to the Russian army. The Germans surrendered at 3 o'clock this afternoon. The German army in Italy has surrendered too. Nearly a million enemy troops have laid down their arms. More details are emerging about the atrocities committed in Nazi concentration camps. The Lord Chancellor has said the Germans must have known what was happening. The Third Reich is on the brink of collapse tonight. Its capital city, Berlin, is in Russian hands and its leader, Adolf Hitler, is dead. On all sides, the remnants of the Reich, which Hitler once said would last for a thousand years, are besieged by rapidly advancing Allied troops. The Russian leader, Marshal Stalin, has announced that Berlin, the heart of German aggression, as he called it, surrendered to the Red Army at 3 o'clock this afternoon. Troops commanded by Marshal Zhukov and Konev have completed the rout of the German garrison after a battle that has raged over the last two weeks. The heart of Germany is tonight in pieces after Red Army units smashed through the final defences to the south and east of the capital. Hitler is dead, his city in ruins. Fortress Berlin no longer stands. After encircling the city seven days ago, the Russians pushed on towards its inner defensive ring. By last night, they had penetrated the city center. It was a barrage unprecedented in military history, with the Russians on the march as never before. The Red Army's artillery outnumbered German tanks more than four to one. A staggering two and a half million men have now punched their way into Berlin under the hammer and sickle banner, crushing the Nazi resistance before them. This afternoon, the demoralized remains of the garrison laid down their arms and emerged from the wreckage around them. Inside the city itself, more than 120,000 German soldiers are now reported in Russian hands with more being rounded up as each hour passes. Proudest moment for the Russians was the capture of Berlin's victory column with its stone statue of Mars, the god of war. It's now a victory column for someone else. As the city lay smoking and in chaos, Moscow radio called on the Germans to regard Berlin's fall as the beginning of a new Germany. But that's not the way they see it tonight with the Russian soldiers parading in triumph and the smell of defeat all around them. In Britain, the news of Adolf Hitler's death was given to a calm House of Commons at about 10.30 last night. But after the BBC had interrupted programmes with the special announcement, thousands of people jammed GPO switchboards trying to telephone friends with the news. German radio said that Hitler died a hero's death, but today President Eisenhower denied that he had died in the fighting. The Russians are saying he committed suicide. This is the last film of Adolf Hitler alive. It was taken a few weeks ago, just before his 56th birthday. The whereabouts of his body remains a mystery, but is thought to be somewhere near here, the Reich Chancellery in Berlin. When Hitler entered Paris in June 1940, he was at the height of his power. In only six weeks, the Wehrmacht had conquered the old enemy, France, and driven our army into the sea. Hitler returned to Berlin in triumph, the triumph of his ideology of national socialism. His means were diplomacy, dishonesty, thuggery and force, but always with the support and the votes of many Germans. So what was the source of his power? Partly it was the almost hypnotic quality of his speeches, which we've heard so many nights over the years on the radio. It was the seductive stage management of fascism, but it was also the obsessive hatred of Jews, communists and democrats. After December 1941, things began to go badly wrong. 
Defeated by the Russian winter, he chose to declare war on America. The two most powerful countries in the world were now his enemies. After Germany's defeat at Stalingrad, the Fuhrer became a semi-recluse. He hid away in his headquarters in East Prussia. Most Germans never saw Hitler again. It seemed that only assassination could snap the bonds of loyalty between him and the German people. But a bomb plot by army officers last summer succeeded only in wounding him. From then, Hitler appeared visibly tired. His military inspiration had long deserted him. It became a matter of holding on to the bitter end. What still remains a mystery is how this former Austrian corporal of World War I, who in his private life loved children, dogs and polite conversation over tea, could become to many the very embodiment of evil who almost brought the world to its knees. German radio has announced that Hitler's successor as Führer is Grand Admiral Karl Dönitz, the commander of the German Navy and the former commander of U-boats. The news of Hitler's death has led to rejoicing, but not everywhere. In Dublin, the Prime Minister of the Irish Free State, Eamon de Valera, expressed his condolences at the German embassy. Today, there's also come the news of the capitulation of all German forces in Italy. The announcement was made to a cheering House of Commons at 7.30 this evening by the Prime Minister, Mr Churchill. The Italian victory is dazzling. Field Marshal Alexander's spring offensive opened less than three weeks ago, when Allied armies burst out of the mountains to sweep the Germans back to the north, achieving, in the words of the Field Marshal today, the complete and utter rout of the enemy forces. The Italians of Bologna, weary of Mussolini and of war, welcomed Allied troops with open arms. The 5th and 8th armies converged there and managed even to shake hands. In Milan, meanwhile, the bullet-riddled body of Mussolini was on show for all to see, alongside those of his mistress and fascist advisers. A turbulent crowd bathed its hatred. Communist partisans executed the Duce last Saturday. More details are emerging of the atrocities which have been committed by the Nazis in the concentration camps, where Jews and others have been imprisoned and exterminated. Three days ago, American troops entered Dachau. It's reported that the horrors they found are worse than those already uncovered at Buchenwald and Bergen-Belsen. In the House of Lords, the Lord Chancellor, Viscount Simon, said today that the German people must have known what was happening in the concentration camps. Some of that evidence has been seen by a parliamentary delegation from Britain. I should warn you that some of the pictures in our report are distressing. What Allied troops have found at Buchenwald and Bergen-Belsen camps leaves no lingering doubt as to the horrors perpetrated by the Nazis on the innocent, most of them Jewish. At Buchenwald, our own MPs have seen the thousands of corpses, the living skeletons empty of mind and scarred of body. A few survivors told of executions. Some were clubbed to death and incinerators received those who stubbornly refused to die. Come on, let my boat drop them out. Here at Belsen, they are still dying, despite efforts to save them. Victims of systematic starvation, torture, and horrific medical experiments. There is an almost obscene contrast between the pathetic bundles of rags and bones and the stout and sullen camp commander, Joseph Kramer. He is suspected of shipping out many thousands of prisoners shortly before our troops arrived. Their fate is unknown, but the worst is feared. And Kramer's sleek and well-fed SS guard, many of them women, seem unperturbed by the evidence of their cruelty. These scenes will haunt the men and women from Britain who have witnessed this epic of brutality. And finally, the headlines again. The war in Europe is nearing its end. The capital of the Third Reich has surrendered and its leader, Adolf Hitler, is dead. More concentration camps have been liberated. And in Italy, one million German troops have surrendered. That was the news tonight, the 2nd of May, 1945. Good night. <laughs>